पेट्रोल इट पावर्स इंडिया रोड फ्यूल आर इकोनॉमी एंड ड्रेन आर फॉरन रिजर्व एवरी टाइम यू फिल योर टैंक मोर देन एटी फाइव परसेंट ऑफ दैट फ्यूल इज इम्पोर्टेड क्रूड ऑयल दैट्स बिलियन ऑफ डॉलर फ्लोइंग आउट ऑफ इंडिया मेकिंग अस डिपेंडेंट ऑन वॉलेटाइल ग्लोबल मार्केट्स नाउ इमेजिन अ सोल्यूशन दैट कुड कट दो इम्पोर्ट्स एम्पावर इंडियन फार्मर्स रिड्यूस पोल्यूशन एंड मेक द कंट्री मोर एनर्जी इंडिपेंडेंट साउंड परफेक्ट राइट वेल दैट्स द प्रोमिस ऑफ इथेनॉल ब्लेंडिंग बट हैज द कैच वाइल पॉलिसी मेकर्स आर सेलिब्रेटिंग कार ओनर्स आर कंप्लेनिंग ऑफ माइलेज ड्रॉप्स एक्सपर्ट्स वरी अबाउट फूड सिक्योरिटी एंड वॉटर स्ट्रेस क्या आपने भी ये नोटिस किया कि आपकी गाड़ी की एवरेज थोड़ी कम हो गई है इंडियन गवर्नमेंट ने 20% परसेंट एथेनॉल ब्लैंडिंग को मैंडेटरी कर दी है माइलेज में भी अलग अलग गाड़ियों पर अलग अलग असर पड़ेगा So, is this India's clean energy breakthrough or a rushed experiment with hidden costs? Let's find out. Before we dig deeper, let's understand some basics about ethanol blending in petrol. Ethanol is alcohol made from crops like sugarcane and maize or even agricultural waste. When blended with petrol, it burns cleaner and reduces pollution. India's ethanol blended petrol program was started in 2003. progress was slow and by 2014 blending was just 1.5% but with the national biofuel policy and its 2022 amendment the target of 20% blending was advanced from 2030 to 2025 the results have been dramatic ethanol production jumped from 38 crore liters in 2014 to over 660 crore liters in 2025 That's how India leapfrogged to E20 fuel where 20% of petrol in your tank is now ethanol. Despite the ambition, numerous cracks have emerged. There has been ample noise about the issues this project has created. First and foremost is mileage and vehicle performance. Ethanol has less energy density than petrol, meaning less distance per liter. This was proved by a survey of 36000 vehicle owners wherein 2/3 reported reduced mileage while nearly half saying the mileage drops exceeded 10%. Let's take another example. A 2015 model Maruti Swift Desire was tested with three petrols: pure petrol, E10 and E20. Results showed mileage dropping from 22 kmpl in E0 or pure petrol to just 15 kmpl in E20. Then comes compatibility issues. Ethanol absorbs water causing corrosion and rust in tanks, pipes and rubber parts. On top of this, retrofitting older vehicles can cost anywhere from rupees 6000 to rupees 35000. Here's where things get further interesting. Automakers only started rolling out E20 compliant models in 2023, leaving millions of older vehicles at risk. The government had promised petrol prices will go down after ethanol blending target was achieved. Despite promises, petrol prices haven't fallen. What's worse is the ethanol procurement is sometimes more expensive than refining petrol, and the consumers they have no choice. At most pumps, E20 is the default and unblended fuel is available only in premium high cost variants. Iska E20 ka kya price hai? 94.24. 94.24. तो पेट्रोल का कितना है? सेम रेट है। सेम रेट है। उसका क्या करूँ मैं? आओ डलवा सकते हैं आप। सर प्रीमियम डलवा लीजिए। प्रीमियम कौन सा? सर 95 ऑप्टन प्रीमियम पावर वाला पेट्रोल जो होता है। The challenge is not limited to automobiles. There are other major concerns as well. One of them is the associated food security risk. Massive ethanol production is diverting food crops. In 2023, maize ethanol surged to 42% of total output, but maize shortages forced India to import grain at unprecedented levels, resulting in import jump of nearly 8000% in 2024. This didn't just affect ethanol, it hit poultry industry where maize is a key animal feed, driving up chicken and egg prices. with government bullish on E25 and E30 this is further expected to amplify another concern related to ethanol blending is water stress sugarcane another major ethanol feedstock consumes 60 to 70 tons of water per ton of cane in drought prone regions this means worsening land degradation and farmer distress despite these challenges the big picture is undeniable 
Firstly, let's see the finance part of it. India imports 85% of its crude oil. Ethanol blending has already saved 1.44 lakh crore rupees in foreign exchange and at 20% blending, the annual saving could be around 43,000 crore rupees. Then comes the environmental gains. Ethanol cuts greenhouse gas emissions significantly. As a matter of fact, sugarcane based ethanol emits 65% less emissions than petrol. India's blending so far has reduced 736 lakh metric tons of CO2, which is equivalent to planting 30 crore trees. Additionally, surveys have shown that vehicles tuned for E20 deliver better acceleration, which is a very important factor in city driving conditions. One of the most crucial advantages is the farmer's empowerment. Farmers have earned over 1.8 trillion rupees since 2014 by supplying crops for ethanol. This shift from Annadata to Urja Data has strengthened rural incomes. Having looked at this analysis, let's have a look at some global success stories, especially the case of Brazil. Many people in support of ethanol blending quote this country. However, on a deeper level, here is what they did differently. Unlike India, Brazil's rollout was phased across decades and not rushed in years. Consumers were always given a choice at the pump with different blends at different prices. Additionally, flex fuel vehicles that run on any mix of ethanol and petrol were introduced early, avoiding compatibility crisis. To balance ambition with reality, India must recalibrate its ethanol blending journey with greater caution and inclusivity. A phased approach rather than a rushed rollout would give the automobile, fuel and insurance sectors enough time to adapt. At the same time, consumers should be offered genuine choice at the petrol pumps with fair pricing across E0, E10 and E20 fuels so that they are not forced into a single option. The promotion of flex fuel vehicles becomes essential here ensuring that drivers are not logged into one blend but can switch seamlessly depending on availability and cost. Equally important is the transition towards second generation ethanol. This is produced from crop residues and agricultural waste which avoids competing with food security and reduces stress on scarce water resources. Another crucial aspect is transparent communication so that citizens clearly understand compatibility issues, performance implications and warranty safeguards rather than being left in confusion or anxiety. Finally, ethanol blending should be viewed as a bridge fuel complementing rather than replacing the country's long-term shift to electric mobility powered by clean energy. Because true energy revolutions are not just about hitting targets, they are about building trust ensuring balance and preparing for the future.